Why should you not redeem Euthuriban if you truly care about saving her in Knights of the Old Republic? As I thought, you are no Sith. A real Sith would have no hesitation in striking me down. Ostensibly, out of the three core options presented in-game for dealing with the second-in-command of the Sith Academy on Korriban, redeeming Uthura and turning her back to the ways of the Jedi on Dantooine and the Light, seems like a no-brainer as the most benevolent of choices the player could make. I have never felt more free. I think I might be able to find a little peace here, finally. Especially as she opens up about a tragic past, where she was a slave and in turn embraced the dark side in hopes of freeing other slaves. I was originally a slave to one of the Huts. The Huts control everything on Sleheran, and a slave is nothing to them. I was determined not to be nothing. And then later realizes the error of her ways. You know, I'd forgotten all about that until I spoke to you about it on Korriban. Strange, considering my hate for them is what made me leave the Jedi. I think... I think I've got to help myself first, before I can help anyone else. Maybe once that happens, I can work with the Jedi to make a difference. They may work slowly, but they do make a difference, don't they? But before we get too hasty and pass judgment, let's examine all three outcomes to either kill, spare, or redeem you through a ban and see if your mind changes about redeeming Ban due to the potential catastrophic damage it could cause. And I know the original Knights of the Old Republic was pretty straightforward in terms of morality and choices. However, let's not be too hasty in forgetting Kreia's lessons in KOTOR 2. And that is my lesson to you. Be careful of charity and kindness, lest you do more harm with open hands than with a clenched fist. You fool! You have no idea what you've done! The final test continues as it should. Proceed and be rewarded, young one. You betrayed me? I thought we were friends, damn you! So, our first and most basic choice is just murdering Uthura during your Sith trials at the behest of Master Uther. Although, that basically maintains the status quo of Uther running the Sith Academy and Uthura losing her life. Excellent work, my young Sith. Your enemy lies dead at your feet, and you are victorious. The final test is complete. Instead, let's further explore the two other more nuanced choices with unknown long-term outcomes. Your destiny lies elsewhere, young one. Not with the Sith, at least not yet. Go, and return another time, if you still wish to. Oh, stop. I yield. You are too strong for me. Gather your hatred and strike me down if that is your will. The first is to spare Euthura. Go then. Go and leave here. I'll not stop you. This would have her return to the Sith Academy and set up shop in place of her former master. Now, it is evident due to the Twi'leks' more even temperament, she would probably be less ruthless than Wynne, even perhaps shaping the Academy students for a less dark future. Greetings, my friend. <laughs> I do rather enjoy saying that. And perhaps a step further with a net shift towards the light. However, being corrupted by the dark side and embracing betrayal as her master had before his demise, perhaps this was a final step towards an irredeemable future for Uthura. Uthar is finished and a new order is brought to the Academy. Excellent. Furthermore, what is interesting in this choice specifically is that we know the fate of the Academy and its students, as Kreia states in KOTOR 2. The resting grounds of the ancient and more recently departed Sith contain many teachings believed lost. We can ask her, what happened here? It was said that Revan intended to return to Korriban to subdue any potential Sith insurgents, but Revan disappeared. It took a year or two for the Republic to send a force here to deal with any Sith that may have remained. They found Korriban much as we have, barren and lifeless. It was assumed that the remnants of the Sith turned on each other, vying for what little power remained. The Republic found evidence that several Sith Lords escaped Korriban, fleeing to remote sections of the galaxy. Do you think there are any living Sith here? As lifeless as it seems, the dark side is very strong here. 
The Sith Lords would not ignore such a powerful place. There is much that can be learned, even here. You should go to the ruins of the old academy. If there are any traces here of Sith, that is where they would be. However, when we search the barren ruins of the Sith Academy, Yuthura Ban, dead or alive, is nowhere to be found. Dark energy fills these ruins, and even the fallen Sith live still. So, infighting took the Academy, perhaps due to Yuthura's more lenient rule. However, some Sith Lords were said to have survived, one of which could no doubt be the uber-resourceful Yuthura and a powerful Force user in her own right. Your destiny does not lie with this Sith, at least not yet. The Academy is mine now. I trust you won't be remaining long, correct? Or at least for her sake, hopefully she's not just another forgotten corpse whose body's littered about the valley. The broken corpses before you are all that remain of the Sith on Korriban. I doubt there is much to be gained from looting these bodies. It would be best to leave them be. Hello. It is good to see you again. As we know, Revan can successfully turn Yuthura away from the dark side, and in turn she will head to Dantooine, where she will somewhat hesitantly reconnect with her old Jedi Master. I met my old master. He, he cried when he saw me. I was embarrassed to see his weakness. Old habits die hard. But it felt good, too. It felt good to know he missed me, that he worried about me. The Council said they would give me time to decide if I wanted to try again. If I was ready. I don't know, there's... there's so much I've done. But those tears of joy from the Jedi would not last long, as after the player is captured by the Leviathan, the Jedi Enclave is attacked by Malak. Obviously, Malak knew the Academy was on Dantooine, and it has since been destroyed by our fleet. Dantooine is an empty graveyard now. Nothing is there but a smoking ruin and the charred remains of your former masters. In fact, it's directly stated, the Jedi Council on Dantooine was aware of the attack thanks to the Force, but was unable to do anything about it save evacuate as they had no protection from an orbital bombardment. Their efforts proved to be unsuccessful as only a small amount of the Jedi stationed on Dantooine were able to evacuate. I suppose I'm taking the news of Dantooine's destruction quite hard. First Taurus, now the Academy. Is there no end to the killing? I can only hope that some of the Jedi escaped. Rook, Vendar, Saar. I cannot imagine all of them being gone. In any case, we've lost our one place of refuge in the galaxy. However, thanks to their precognition of the attack, many high-ranking members of the Jedi Council were able to escape such as Master Vanda and Master Vrook. Dantooine suffered greatly then under the yoke of the Sith after the location of the Jedi Enclave was exposed and the bombardment completed. Sith troopers invaded and occupied the world, with many innocent settlers arrested and executed for no reason whatsoever. Malik then took Jedi captured in the attack to the viewing platform of the Starforge, where they were placed in cells preventing them from becoming one with the Force and were used to enhance Malik's own power. In Look around you, Revan. See the bodies? You should recognize them from the Academy. These are Jedi who fell when I attacked Dantooine. For all intents and purposes, dead. Except for one difference. I have not let them become one with the Force. Instead, I have brought them here. The Starforge corrupts what remains of their power and transfers the Dark Taint. To me. So, in essence, there was a high probability if Euthura wasn't caught in the rubble of the bombardment, she probably would have been executed in a most brutal fashion to make an example of her to the other Sith, or worse, forced to live in a state of undeath by Malik. And although we don't see her husk of a body floating with the other single mullet men in Malik's Starforge Sanctuary, I assume that's probably due to limited player models used. And conversely, we don't see Yuthura at all during the ending for the light side, where the masters who survived the bombardment can be seen near the Rakatan Temple and commend a redeemed Revan and his surviving party members. It could be argued that it would be more light side to offer Yuthura an assured, swift, Death. I understand. May the Force serve you well. 
versus Face perhaps infighting on Korriban and being left to the Sith students to take her apart, or the off chance that she died a slow and painful death on Dantooine or became an example thanks to Malak, and the player's misguided attempt at netting light side points and redemption. Good luck, my friend. May the Force be with you. But what do you think? Let me know which course of action you'd recommend, and make sure to like and subscribe for more Dark Lore. I think... I think I've got to help myself first before I can help anyone else. Maybe once that happens, I can work with the Jedi to make a difference. They may work slowly, but they do make a difference, don't they?